he is a king on a donkey. Welcome back to Why Hope, the video series that explores reasons for hope in our day. Last week we explored the humble king that Jesus is and I want to continue with a similar theme which is the king who rides on a donkey, the king who is a king of peace. Now on Palm Sunday, as you probably know, a huge crowd gathered to welcome Jesus into the city and they tore palm branches down and they waved them and they shouted Hosanna. Now, this was not the first time that someone had been welcomed into Jerusalem in such a style. When Alexander the Great rode into Jerusalem, having uh, on his great on his great conquest, he was he was welcomed in by the city elders. Now I think that this was a um, a political welcome. This was a we'll welcome you because otherwise you're going to conquer us sort of welcome. But they orchestrated a great public welcome for him, and he rode in on his mighty horse, and um, and, and and took the throne as it were. Um, a little later, um, there was uh, there was a Jewish revolt against um, the Greek Empire that had been really oppressively ruling Jerusalem. And the leader of that revolt, who had been victorious, he'd thrown off the Greek yoke for a while. Judas Maccabeus, his name was. And he rode into the city of Jerusalem in a very similar way. And he was greeted with a great chorus of praise and by the waving of palm branches. This is how you greet a victorious warrior. And a little later again, the great uh, general Pompey, great Roman general, he conquered Jerusalem on behalf of the empire, on behalf of Caesar. Uh, sorry, on behalf of the Republic of Rome, I should say, actually. But the point is, he entered in grand procession and he was welcomed, welcomed, perhaps we might say, in much the same way. So this is a familiar way to welcome a warrior king or a warrior who stands in for the king. And uh, the Palm Sunday procession is recorded in all of the Gospels. I'm going to read you the one, the version from Matthew 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, I want us to notice that riding in on a donkey was very much a political statement. It was indeed a claim of kingship. Um, we spoke last week about Jesus being the humble king, but he remains the king. He doesn't take many of the privileges of kingship to himself, but he is still the king. And riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, um, because it um, is referenced, because it is foretold in the prophet Zechariah, behold, your king comes to you on a donkey. What Jesus is doing is a very deliberate political act and saying, I am coming as your king. But he's not that sort of king, um, as we said last week. Now, when we if we turn to Zechariah 9, where this is foretold, we so often stop reading after a single verse. We simply read Zechariah 9, verse 9, and that's what is quoted in uh, Matthew and in at least one of the other Gospels. Um, but whenever the Old Testament prophets are quoted in the New Testament, um, we would do very well to um, look back at the at the prophecy and to read, uh, read a little bit more broadly, because um, the, prof the, uh, the Gospel writers, the New Testament writers, they, they, they have this trick where they, they refer to a single verse, but they expect the whole passage 
to be resonating in the mind of the reader. So in Zechariah 9, we read these words. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. We know that bit. We hear that in in the Gospels. But listen on. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. This is the sort of king that Jesus is. This is the political claim that he is making as he's riding into the city. He's saying, I am your king, but remember Pompey? Remember Judas Maccabeus? Remember Alexander? I'm not that sort of king. His dominion shall be from sea to sea. He shall command peace to the nations. And along this same line, I want to show you one other place where we just don't read the prophet properly. Uh, And I want to read to you from Isaiah 9. It's such a familiar passage and it's one which we hear again and again at Christmas. And this is what we hear. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And it it continues. No, I will read on. And the authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. For the throne of David and his kingdom he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. It's most wonderful, um, rich promise. Um, And we do well to read it at Christmas. But why do we miss out a couple of verses in the middle? Um, It's... It's, it's bonkers. It makes me really sad that we miss these verses out. So if I read it to you properly now, with without missing out the three verses in the middle, this is what we get. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who land in a, live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Now listen. You have multiplied exaltation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. Because the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born. And then it continues. Now, why do we miss out these extraordinary verses? It's saying that this day, this day of great light, this day when a child is born to us. It's a day of great rejoicing. And the prophet thinks, when when are the moments that we most rejoice in our nation? And we rejoice when the harvest is in because we we know that we will eat next year. And we rejoice when the battle has been won. These are the two perhaps greatest moments of national rejoicing. And it's like that, he says. And then he goes on to cash that out a bit more. Because in verse four, He says, the yoke of oppression is lifted. And in verse five, he said, and the warrior is disarmed. The boots of the tramping warriors and the garments rolled in blood will be burned like matchwood. Release from oppression and an end to war. This is the promise that Isaiah is making in that famous passage, unto us a child is born. How how we miss that when we just skip through from verse two to verse six. And so this is the sort of king that we serve. This is the sort of king that he is. And as Jesus rides into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he is laying claim to these prophecies and he's saying, I'm not that sort of king. I am a king of peace. And for this reason, we can have hope.